Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 47 of the unofficial, official, unofficial Rogue Company podcast broadcast. I'm here with Dirt Lord. I'm here with Garbo. And I'm here with Griffin. And this is the Rogue Company podcast bringing you all the news that you need to know about Rogue Company. And the last two episodes have been kind of, you know, not really weird, but like there's been a lot going on. So on this one, we're going to keep it a little bit more light, a little bit more digestible. And we're just going to talk about the Eternal Conflict mid-season. I'm going to call it the mid-season, not the mid-patch update. And also the community section. And that's all we're going to touch on. So we're going to jump into it here with the Eternal Conflict mid-season patch notes here instead of the mid-patch notes. We're going to run through each one of these. We're going to give our thoughts and opinions about it, and then we're going to segue right on over to the community section. But first up here, health regeneration for rogues. So in the last update, they extended the health regeneration um, from five seconds to six seconds. In this update, they reverted it back to five seconds. Now, for me personally, like it did take a little bit of time to get used to the five or the six second health regeneration delay but it wasn't as bad like it's one second and like in game time one second feels like an eternity you know it does it's huge yeah but we've been playing a game with a five second health regeneration delay for almost three years at this point so Whenever you change up a fundamental core thing, that's like if they decided to disable rolling in the game. Oh God. You know what I'm yeah, exactly. It's the same, it's the same idea. Imagine if you couldn't roll anymore or crouch or sprint. Like the health regeneration is that ingrained into the <clears throat> into the DNA of the game that like if you make a change or a tweak to it, then it's gonna feel off. For literally everybody, unless that someone just downloaded the game and started playing it at that moment. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I'm glad it's back to five seconds. I mean, it was just one of those situations where it just felt, it didn't feel bad. It just didn't feel right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that, um, so that, that got the SMG change. Yeah, I know. roll, Roll that back. Exactly, right. So for Cannon, they are changing his role from a defender to a breacher, and they made a couple of changes to his Gatlin gun ability here. So I want to read this. It says, additionally, we are changing how his Gatlin gun functions so that its primary function is to move forward and annihilate the enemy within balanced reasons, of course. So with that being said, they reduced the headshot damage from 18 down to 16, reduced the body shot damage from 15 to 14, no longer able to go prone or mount while using the Gatling gun, and the movement speed while using the Gatling gun has been reduced by 15%. Now, mounting it and going prone with it, like it puts you in a in a state to where you could fundamentally shield your body depending on where you were, you know, from the front side, and you would take less damage. You had to be a skilled shot. But with him just walking. And having it out, he was already really, really slow. So, like, they should have just dumped the damage down of it substantially as opposed to making these changes, in my opinion. Like, it takes longer to pull the Gatling gun out now. Whenever you're moving around, you're just moving at a turtle's pace. And, like, the passive ability is supposed to be made to feed into the Gatling gun primarily, right? And the idea is like the more people or the more things that you're hitting with the Gatling gun, because you can shoot the anvil shield and stuff and it gives you time back. So like as you're shooting things and people, this, that, and the other, it extends the duration of the Gatling gun ability. They could have tweaked that up. Like there's a lot of things that they could have done with it, but now his ability went from being a very situational ability that you may be successful with occasionally to not being useful at all yeah you can feel it yeah yeah i mean he's already a rogue that's not very highly played yes the gatling gun is something that is very powerful and it should feel very powerful but at the same time like he's easy to counter you have hack you have uh emp grenades you have fire 
you can shoot him in the head while he's walking towards you, and it's not very hard, like, to shoot him while he has the Gatlin gun out. Like, there's so many counters to cannon, and I would say that, like, Glimpse is a rogue that is way more powerful than cannon is in every single way possible, but she's just played more. Like, that's the only difference. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Her her ability is very situational. Really? Glimpse's ability is very situational, but her passive ability is amazing. It makes up for that. Whereas here, the Gatlin gun was situational, and his passive ability would have been a really, really good passive ability if it wasn't tied to his Gatlin gun. And they could up the per, the refund percentage of the ammunition, and it could be a very cool and interesting mechanic for him. But they just decided to do these changes. It's 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 kind of dumb, just to be completely honest. I don't like it. No. Yeah. <clears throat> Tally said, I also noticed Cannon is a lot easier to take down, it seems. He seemed pretty tanky, but now not so much, if that makes sense. Yeah, because like you could pull the Gatlin gun out and use the little shields on it to 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 shield your body from taking some damage, and like whenever you pull the Gatlin gun out, the sound alone is supposed to get people to be like, "Wait a minute, I'm not going to go over there." But now, since he can't move around, he can't mount, he can't go prone. People are like, "Oh, it's just cannon," and they just run up and burn him down. You know, mm -hmm. there's no real counterplay involved in it. You just deal with it. You know. So for Vi, she got a couple of adjustments here. So her katana was replaced with the combat knife, and then her primary ability, the vile poison. The cooldown was increased on that from 30 to 40 seconds. The poison duration was reduced from 12 to 10 seconds. The throw distance was reduced. Uh, rare tenacity was replaced with rare helping hands, and epic replenish was replaced with epic tenacity. So... People are complaining, of course, because they can't complain about SMGs anymore, you know? So now they're complaining about, well, why are they taking Replenish off of all the rogues? Well, Replenish is a broken perk to begin with. They absolutely need to rework that perk 110%. But for Vi specifically, like, there's no counter to her poison. Yeah, she's still ripping. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's the thing. Trench barbed wire can be hacked or you can punch it and destroy it. Um, juke drones can be destroyed by APS systems or you can shoot those and destroy them. Like any type of like AOE, uh, lane denial, whatever, other than incendiary grenades has some type of a counter to it. You can't hack the Vi poison. You can't punch the Vi poison to destroy it. You can't, like it just exists. There needs to be some type of hard counter for it, whether it be making it something that is hackable, making it something that you can like move or do something with in an offensive way to get it away from you. And I got an idea. I'm going to throw it at you guys and see what y'all think about this. Now, this is something that like I sent over to the developers a while back about the reflector, right? Mm-hmm. How cool would it be if you could shoot the reflector into the poison piles and it just pushed yeah. them away from you? Like that would make I mean, the yeah. that would make the reflector <clears throat> actually good, you know? You should be able to move anything with it. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to be able to blow somebody off the map, you should be able to shoot anything with it and blow it off the map as well, you know? But all in all, Vi is very much still a oppressive rogue to an extent like replenish doesn't make her as bad and like people were running vi with a hydra and then of course with replenish then the incendiary grenades and the poison it made her feel way worse than she actually was but now she doesn't feel that bad she feels very powerful still but she doesn't feel bad so for dahlia they replaced the APS with the Pop Smoke. Her Rare Blaster was replaced with Rare Evade. And Epic Replenish was replaced with Epic Quick Hands. Now, I've got a theory about something here. Uh, a lot of these people that had Replenish taken away from them, 
got like another reload perk, whether it be quick hands or uh, whatever. And they also got evade. I have a theory mm-hmm. that they're going to start combining evade with some of these rework perks so that you get all your speed boosts, whether it be reloading, moving around or whatever it is into like one perk. I don't know. I don't know if that's something for real, like this is just theory, but I think that they're, they're doing that to see like, okay, how does quick hands feel with evade? And if we put both of these things together on one ca- character, would it break that character? That's what it feels like to me, you know? But I know a lot of people are like the community seems to be split on this APS pop smoke thing. What do you guys think about that? I like to use it. It's very. It's wait, wait. You yeah, sound far away. Or yeah, something. yeah. You sound like you're. But I'm not. Right. There you are. Yeah, you're back. Oh, it might be because of my hand. I might have had my hand over the thing. But uh, I was gonna say I like the pop so- smoke because, like, if you dig too deep into a situation that you shouldn't be in, you can pop yourself out. Pretty much, you can use it to evade or get out of the situation. Yeah, there has a there. I even like it when the opponents do it because, like, even though they're using it, you can use it to your advantage too. Like, you can use their own pop smoke against them. Like, you can hide in their own pop smoke, and the only people that can see it is what fixer. Yeah, if he has his ability, or if they're revealed. Right. right, which I mean, most of the time that's either Dallas has to be snapping his fingers, or the Talon Dark, or the Sticky Sensor have to be right there. Unless you you're getting tracker around, then that's a whole other story. You shouldn't even be there. You know, yeah. that's a whole nother, <laughs> but. Yeah, I don't have an issue with the pop smoke. That that doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, and I like the blaster change. How many times you've been like, "Why do I have blaster?" Yeah, exactly. Right, I know. I mean, I like blaster for Dima. Yeah, yeah, on blaster rogues, like you know. Yeah. But, but with but now you can pop smoke and invade. Think, yeah, I don't know if I like. I mean, yeah, I guess I do like blaster on those rogues because I pick blaster over volatile with switchblade. Most of the time. Wait, do I? No, yeah, I'm pretty sure I do. Because it's cheap. Is that not the cheaper one? It's the Blaster? Which think, one's the cheaper one? I think Blaster. Volatile, Volatile and Switchblade is cheaper? I believe that Blaster is the last one. <laughs> like, it's the big one. No, hers is Restock and... Uh, oh, shoot. I don't know. Oh. I was just no, talking about not- Dahlia, but... Like, right. the change on her... <clears throat> well, I mean, I still like the pop. I didn't. Oh, I haven't ran the pop smokes with her, but I still prefer the pop smokes. Yeah, blast. I, mean, I like the AP. I like the APS too. Yeah, her perks are uh, gold blaster restock mm-hmm. and blue volatile. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I always buy volatile. I don't ever buy the blaster. Just depends on the, the money. Area. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really get um, with Switchblade. It's really restock and bulletproof. I don't yeah. get monster. Like, I just don't see the point. But yeah, Dahlia, her. I don't ever buy Blaster with Dahlia. No, <laughs> like ever because nine out of ten, if I pick Dahlia, I'm almost always going to grab the APS just because I like being able to throw that down right beside me and then. Guess what? No Simtech or no Flashbang or no, whatever they're trying to throw at me in that moment in time don't, don't doesn't work. Right. So what do you guys think about the idea of what if they remove the frag grenade from Dahlia altogether and give her pop smoke in the APS? I would be, I would be okay with that. It would make, like I'm sure people might hate that because Dahlia won't be as explosive because you can't follow up with like a grenade throw with like throwing yourself right after. Right. But I don't know. I like, and she's more of a, she's supposed to be a support. So that's more of a support rogue style. And yeah, I do like to be able to like, cause if you, you can still be aggressive with the pop smoke. Like you don't have to just go defensive with the pop smoke. You can use the pop smoke to get closer, you know, throw it in, in their lane, maybe close off a lane or, yeah, again, you can use it to your advantage when you run through the smoke because maybe they don't think it through, yeah. you know. <laughs> Pop it, heal somebody, throw the APS down. Yeah. Yeah. Get that hill off. So I'm there's looking. A, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, there's just, it. the pop smoke is, is almost a very, 
It's very flexible utility. It's a very, very flexible utility. Yeah. So here's here's what I'm thinking. Okay. If they took frag grenades off of Dahlia right now and just looking at her perk set here, she has gold lifeline, gold bounce back, purple energize, purple quick hands, purple tenacity, blue evade, blue crack shot, blue shred rounds. There's two perks that she has access to right now that really doesn't do anything. They're just filler perks, right? Shred rounds and crack shot. More or less, you're getting 10% damage to armored targets and deployables and 5% increased headshot damage. Now, this is what I would propose, okay? Because I like this idea of a character. Pop Smoke APS. Uh, for her uh, gold perk, slot in Energize to, to be able to get your ability back faster. Leave Lifeline. Drop Bounce Back down to uh, Epic Perk. And then slot out either um, slot out evade into a purple perk, drop quick hands down to blue, and then put uh, helping hands down as a blue perk. And the idea would be is you want to prioritize getting, of course, lifeline and um, helping hands. But imagine someone like she can trigger the ability revive one person. But if you had the ability to throw the pop smoke. They're going to be shooting in that general direction. It's going to trigger the evade. You're able to run up, throw an APS system down, heal them real quick by hand, run back to cover. Like she would be like a legitimate combat medic at that point. Run out and run out into the battlefield and then stitch them up and bring them back. You know? Yeah. They could, they could definitely, like, people want to run, this is my thing, people want to run Dahlia as, like, a non-support character. And, like, that's okay. It's like her support ability is a secondary function to the way that people want to run her. Because she has submachine guns, she, have fra she has frag grenades, she has the executioner at base, and she has uh, DMRs. So people want to play with her more aggressively than I feel like that they should be playing with her as a support rogue. So, like, they could change her perks around a bit, get rid of the grenade altogether, give her APSs, give her pop smokes, and then allow her to run in and heal people and run back out. Like, she's supposed to be a support character. They made her aggressive when they gave her that SMG because you have to be so close. Always had to be pretty close with it. So, I think if they reworked her a little bit, she would be a ton better in my opinion as a proper support. I'm not saying she's bad now. I'm just saying like she could be better, you know? Mm -hmm. And I know a lot mm -hmm. of people out there are going to hate that idea and I'm prepared for the comments below, but that's like the reality of it. Most people don't run Dahlia as a support character. And if you're someone that is complaining about like getting her perks and her grenade taken away and her perks messed with, you're one of those people. So that's all I'm saying, you know? So Kestrel. Kestrel got a pretty substantial perk loadout change. So currently this is her perk lineup. She has rare evade, rare life drain, rare blaster, epic energized, epic quick cans was replaced with epic padded steps, epic stalker, legendary shredder rounds, and new legendary gadgeteer is replaced with legendary restock. This is so basically what they did was they made Kestrel back the way that she used to be. And um, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, my biggest thing, and of course, I'm I look at the game in a different light. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and say that before we get to the SMG changes. I look at the game in a different light. And to me, Kestrel was fine with quick hands, she was fine with gadgeteer. She just had a crappy HP perk. They should have bumped life drain up to at least an epic level to increase her survivability. Because like the stems, not having two stems out of the rip anymore, like you used to be able to have, and then having the runway briefcase nerfed her in a pretty substantial way, in my opinion. But them taking padded steps away from her in the first place was like the greatest decision that they ever made. Because like you, it's like when they took padded steps off of Glitch, right? He doesn't have padded steps anymore, does he? I think he still does, unless it was during this change. 
Because he's, I'm pretty sure I've used it. Well, he he may still have it, but anyway, it's like whenever you played he, with Glitch. Yeah, he's when, got it. Okay, but it's like when you played with Glitch when he had the pad out, and you could kind of pad around, and you mm-hmm. would come in behind the enemy. People didn't like that play style so much that they changed the way that his ability worked to stop yeah. that type of behavior. People didn't like Kestrel. Like people are celebrating this Kestrel change now, but give it three months, and people are going to be wanting. Padded steps taken away. They're going to be padded steps with restock, and her ability and her weapons is going to be too strong. Mark my words. That's, it's going to be this inevitable cycle of bullshit that continues to happen. Leave restock. Get rid of padded steps. She'll be fine. She'll be perfectly fine. And honestly, they could get rid of restock as her epic perk. Instead of padded steps, they could give her replenish, and they could Keep her with Legendary Gadgeteer, or they could give her Legendary Blaster since they nerfed the explosion radius of her ability, or, I don't know, Evade. Make her a fast character, kind of like how uh, Lancer is. Like, they could have made her a really cool, interesting character, but no, we want to bring that ratty play style back as quickly as possible, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I think padded steps is a little over. I think they can remove that, but I do really like the restock. I feel like that's a perk that they really should have given her to make her stronger. But the padded steps, yeah, man. There's already a, plenty of people that like sneak around the map and do plenty of work. I don't feel like Kestrel, that's a very explosive duelist, needs to be padded stepping around either. Because, I mean, technically we already have Umbra. That's a very explosive breacher. Exactly. And he's got padded steps. So, I mean, I just, I don't feel, yeah, that we don't need to have all these rogues that are explosive padded stepping. Like, we need to have the evasive characters. Like, the, the I mean, I hate it, but Glimpse is an evasive character. She needs padded steps. And guess, you know, like, there's just, there's certain rogues that should have it. We shouldn't see Dima with padded steps. You know what no. I mean? Like, we shouldn't no. see, we should, there's just certain characters that shouldn't be walking around with padded steps. And I feel like Kestrel is one of those characters because she can be very explosive if you know how to use her. Exactly. Because, like, how much did you hate it back in the day whenever you were playing demo, playing on High Castle? You're waiting for somebody to push around the corner, and you just get Kestrel ulted in the back. No time oh, to respond. A whole day. Yeah. Um, you don't always hear it when she sets that off, too. Like if you're not within the sound range or whatever, I don't, I don't know the meters or whatever, but like, yeah, if you're not within it, you won't hear it. You just, you just hear the explosions when it's on top of you, and sometimes that's too late. Because exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe that was just a way to fix her audio. Because how many times have you been like, I didn't hear that Kestrel? That's true. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, now she has padded steps. Yeah, now you you have something to blame it on. Instead of them fixing the character, they just gave her a scapegoat. You know, it's crazy. I mean, that's pretty nutty. But we'll see. I mean, Kestrel went from being one of the most popular rogues in the game to being oh. one of the most underrated rogues in my opinion like she was always good she just didn't have the same benefits that other characters have and it's like well uh dallas is a duelist and dallas doesn't have uh access to life drain at all and it's like yeah that's true but dallas can also reveal people he has and a he's st- got a bullet shot yeah and yeah he's got a stem you know and he's got armor so like yeah if you're in a position to where you're one v one in someone and like you can make it out of that alive and get it down, you can see where the next person that's going to push you normally is. That's more valuable than any of this. That being able to reveal people is more valuable than any HP perk in this game. You remember when we started this game, we thought reveal was trash. Yeah, I remember right. when we started, and we were like, "What the fuck? What's the point of having reveals?" They're like, "Man, reveals have just yeah." Come yeah. a long way. Like now, it's just part of my meta. Like if I don't have running some intel stuff, like I'm, yeah, you know, is I prefer if I run a, a character that has like sticky sensors or is able to or has tracker rounds. I almost buy tracker rounds every time. Like even with Trench, he has rare tracker rounds. Crucial, dude. They they have come in so clutch. Just for a two second reveal, it's just 
Yeah. Enough for your whole team to know and run over there and swarm. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that that's the difference. If people want to make that argument with Kestrel, it's like, yeah, give me a duelist and then I'll find a way to tell you that this is what they have access to that makes them better than Kestrel. Like Kestrel having the stem wasn't enough because she couldn't carry two. Whenever you have people that have a stem and have armor and can reveal people, or you have characters that are faster than she is that can get behind cover or, you know, like there's a lot of different things that goes into that. So, but yeah. she, she's in a good spot now. She, they just need to get rid of padded steps. In my opinion. She'd be perfect. I agree. I, like I said, I enjoy the restock. I haven't even ran her yet with restock, but I already run restock with Mac and I run restock yeah, with Switch nice. Blade. And it's already so nice that like I'm probably gonna buy it. Like, and to be fair, the shredder rounds that she does carry for legendary were really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I like I like the kit. I'm I don't care for padded steps, but man, does it feel good to look at her kit and be like, oh dude. I would yeah. have so much fun with her. I know, right? <laughs> so for the perk changes, Bounce Back got a minor price bump to a potent perk. So the legendary Bounce Back cost has been increased from thirteen to 14000 And they did that because of the health regeneration delay. They said that way back when, when they changed the, or like in the last update when they changed it that if they reverted the health regeneration delay back to five seconds, then they would increase the price of bounce back. So that's what's happening there. So Lifeline. Okay, Lifeline was marginally more expensive perk that was also substantially better than Helping Hands since it has a dual function. We are tuning down the revive speed to validate Helping Hands a bit more. Additionally, we discovered some issues with Epic and Legendary Lifeline that we've addressed. We may visit Helping Hands later to give it a buff. Uh, so rare lifeline revive speed reduction has been reduced from 20 to 15 percent. Epic has been reduced from 40 to 30 percent. And then the note says, but the description already says 30 percent. Actually, it was being reduced by 40 percent. We fixed it to work as intended. And for legendary, it went from 60 percent down to 50 percent. And then this says, but the description said 40 percent. So we discovered this perk was actually reducing the revive time to 40% instead of by 40%. Flubbing of the math that has been cleaned up. How do you make that kind of mistake? Ah. I mean, essentially, yeah. Yeah, the description says 40%, but we discovered that. So instead of healing 40% faster, you were just healing 40% of the life bar, and that's it. That's why Legendary Lifeline on Dahlia felt so good even though she only had access yeah. to one revive perk because she's only healing 40 percent of it at a you know like mm -hmm. wow you know so fast yeah so my thing is and i and i submitted this to the developers as well just so everybody is aware um i think that helping hands should have a um dual function as well as lifeline and I think that they should remove the Saint passive and they should apply the Saint passive to Helping Hands. So basically, Lifeline is like a healing perk with bounce back baked into it to where you start regenerating your health immediately when you get revived. To me, put the Life Drain equivalent into Helping Hands that Saint has to where it scales the way that helping hand scales so that when you revive someone and they come yeah. up instead of 25 HP, maybe they come up with 45 HP. Maybe they come up with 65 HP. Maybe they come up with 85 HP that, and then give Saint another different, good passive ability and just call it a day. Like that. I need would, that. Yeah. It would make the revive perks. And like, how many times have you been in a situation where it's like, I need half of a second to revive this person. There's somebody yeah. pushing, but that person, oh, yeah. But the person that's man. down, unless they're get not, unless they're getting revived by saint, they're going to get burnt down first because that person yep. that's pushing is going to be like, Oh, this guy's one shot. I'm going to go ahead and take him out of the equation. So I can focus on this one V one, you know? Mm -hmm. So that would give some really good, like, Okay, I've got this person down there getting revived behind the box, but should I push them? Do they have helping hands? And yeah. is, 
You, you see what I mean? So mm-hmm. I think that that would make some nice counterplay. Too bad we're not a tactical shooter anymore. Next up, we're talking about weapons. Mm-hmm. Okay. For pistol changes, the <laughs> executioner base accuracy has been increased. So in the last update, they loosey goosey up the accuracy of the Executioner and also buffed the damage of it. So instead of reverting the damage back down, they just uh, buffed the base accuracy for it. So now it's one of the hardest hitting pistols in the game because balance. How does it work? For the Spitfire, um, the Spitfire is receiving the first changes that it has received in a very long time here. Uh, Because they did the original SMG requested, community requested SMG changes, by the way, to the Spitfire so that people could play around with it and give feedback on it. And they reverted some of that. So the uh, damage fall off thresholds was increased from 7, 14 meters to 9, 17, and 20 meters. And the damage fall off adjusted to 80%, 55%, and 30%. Now I'm going to actually take a snip of this real quick. Um, the fall off right here, and I'm going to pull this over here on my other monitor so that we can reference it later because the damage fall off threshold for the Spitfire is 91720 now, and the fall off ranges is 80%, 55%, and 30%. So I'm going to use this here in a second when we get to, well, now when we get to the SMG changes. So this is what they had to say about the SMGs. While they have dropped a bit in use rate and their win rates still above 50%, the SMGs are getting a global bump and some targeted adjustments to put them in our intended placements for them. This will involve increasing the overall accuracy, improving bloom, and pushing out fall-off thresholds to be more reasonable. We will continue to watch player sentiment and the data. So we'll touch these one at a time. The D40C, the base accuracy was increased. The accuracy loss per shot was decreased. The max accuracy loss was decreased. And the damage fall off thresholds increased from 8, 17, 21 and a half to 10, 19, 25. So I don't know what the percentages are for the fall off on the SMGs. But if we look here, we've got 9, 17 and 20 meters, which is very comparable to what the D40's got. But as you can see here, 80, 55, 30% fall off. Okay. The point that I'm going to try to continue to make here is that one of these two things should have been changed and not both of the things. If they were going to increase the base accuracy and decrease the accuracy loss per shot and the max accuracy loss, then they shouldn't have changed the fall off thresholds. Or if they wanted to change the fall off thresholds, then they should have left the accuracy the way that it was. Currently, SMGs right now are laser beams. Like the SMG meta is back in full swing. 110%. And you'll see why as we work our way through these here. So for the D40, I've played a couple of games with it. I mean, it burns people down like really really quickly i mean what 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 have what's y'all's experience with it same (laughs) going up against it god damn you know right yeah but running it yeah it's i mean the other night when you were like let's all swap to smg see how that goes yeah we just ran the train on them yeah exactly i mean they surrendered that's how bad it was yeah it was bad Mm mm-hmm I was like, oh, this is what that felt like earlier. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, when we were trying to run our ARs yeah, and yeah, snap and Yeah. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yep. But the first game I played after this patch, I was shocked. I know, me too. Griffin told me and I was like, it can't be that bad. He's like, nah, wait. Yeah. And I was shocked. I was like, oh. Yeah. But I thought oh my God. we were gonna change them. No, we reverted them back. The- so this, before I continue on, this is, it's such a polarizing thing that it honestly doesn't make any sense. And there's only one conclusion that I've came up with to give any of this any kind of reasoning behind it. The D40, for example, okay, you drop the accuracy down on it, you drop the range on it, the fall off 
thresholds on it down a little bit, but you increase the ammo size for the weapon overall. You increase the body shot damage overall. Like you do buffs to the weapon to kind of counteract the nerfs that you're doing to the weapon, to give it an identity to adjust it. And then instead of reducing the magazine size back down to where it needs to be and reducing the body shot damage back down to where it needs to be, you're just going to buff the two things that were keeping the SMGs from going completely rampant. And now guess what's happening? The SMGs are completely rampant in the game again. Yep. Are we going to roll the ARs back? Cause I'm getting clapped at long range. Yeah, right. By the LMPX. Yeah, right. I mean, that's that. That's the thing, man. It's like you want the SMGs to be competitive. You you want the SMGs to not be a Swiss Army weapons that they've been for literal years at this point. Like you want to fix the SMGs, but yet you're going to go in there, make small buffs to the SMGs while you're trying to re re-identify them and rebalance them out and then you're just going to go in there and just ramp up everything you're going to you're going to reduce the accurate or increase the accuracy reduce the accuracy loss per shot and then extend the fall off ranges but you're not going to tweak any of the damage numbers that you adjusted and you're not going to reduce the ammo count that you like what what is happening over here like we were in a we were we were in a upward trajectory in my opinion on game balance and that shit crashed to the ground faster than that fucking missing airplane. Like Jesus Malaysia Christ. Flight. Yes. It's gotta be an April Fool's joke, right? I, it's gotta I don't know. It's gotta be. Something's going on over there. I don't know. Like and this is what I'm gonna say moving forward. Oh, the one conclusion, nobody's complaining about SMGs anymore, so you did it. Congratulations. If you were I'm complaining co- about them. I mean, I'm what, gonna, what is it gonna I don't put the kind of time man? in, I guess. It's all because the people, yeah, man, it's because SMGs get picked 50% of the time, dude. Out of all weapons, that's just, it's an unbelievable number. But at the same time, dude, like, really, guys? You have to only run SMGs? And they still worked. They oh, were yeah. fine. I mean... Yeah. Like I knew they How many were times did you get like, dropped? Yeah. Look, and it's like, oh knew, yeah, they suck now. We knew that they were gonna do some like changes, but like completely revert them back. Yeah. Better. Maybe. Better. It's like what? Well, it- where where was the thought process there? Like what was what was the whole point of making that Even direction yeah. if we're gonna if we're gonna step back? Because now what's happened is, again, we have ARs nerfed, or whatever, balanced, or whatever. I, I don't know about that, because again, the Hydra's fucking running rampant. All right, the raw Hydra's, even though y'all did that, yeah. shit, Mark that, didn't make, that didn't make a thing. Yeah, Mark IV is, I mean, I don't know, like, I don't know what's the whole goal now, because, like, what are y'all's next changes? Are y'all going to just sabotage the DMRs? Because you don't need to. Because the DMR, if this is how the game's going to run, DMRs need to get, like, in a better spot. Because they're not going to win. Yeah. I mean, the, they don't need to do any changes to the DMR, the DMRs if the uh, SMGs are going to be the way that they are now. I think they need to be buffed. I mean, shit, we're lose, we, we lose mid to long range fights. That's, that's a yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, and I know it's only what? How many days has this been? This has been since Tuesday. So what? Five days? Uh, enough to know. The, oh, what you? Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. That's what it's only been five days. That's what. That's what I'm trying to say. Day it's only been five. Five days, and we're like, whoa, bro! Like, damn. Yeah. See, this, this is the point that I'm running SMGs. Like I'm literally running SMGs so I can like have good gameplay. Yeah. See, <laughs> see, before this update, the skill ceiling for this was raised pretty substantially because you actually had to use other things in your arsenal yeah. other than your aim to be successful with SMGs. In real life and in any other competitive game, any other game whatsoever, you have to rely on your positioning and how well you can close gaps. And people don't take into account the other tools that the rogues have access to in order to close these gaps. Like take Chalk, for example. 
Chalk can overheal, so he can go to 175 HP, and he has flashbangs, and he has Simtex. But no, it's we're going to run up, dude. Yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna buff the SMG so that you don't have to use any of the things in his arsenal until you get down to a one v one, so that you can flash the person, throw a Simtex on a quarter, chalk overheal, and then push them yep. like a cheese ball. Like th- that's the thing. Yeah. And ARs felt so much better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, and now it's just, we're back to, I have to pick a character where I can pick, you know, you just don't know until you get in there. It's like, oh, I can't use this gun. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, I have you, to catch swap. Them, you catch them by surprise. And like, yeah. that's the advantage with ARs now because they're so accurate. Like, yeah. you can probably get like seven or eight shots where they even know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> But exactly. like at the same time, if you're playing those yeah. frontal engagements where like there's no closed off block ways or anything like that, like it's just that straight fight one on one. Yeah. Most likely the SMGs are gonna dominate. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you're getting those shots, somebody comes up to the side of you behind you, burnt down. Yeah, before yeah. mid range, burnt down. Can't yeah. yeah, even get around the, very, the corner. Yeah, the close spaces with SMGs, like they were all, man, even with the nerve that people were so bent out of shape about. They were still so fucking powerful. Like, yeah. I don't understand. Like, I mean, I ripped. We were ripping. Yeah. And, and now, like, holy crap, we're not ripping. They're Swiss cheese. They're Swiss fucking cheese now. And they're just laying there. Yeah. And, and <laughs> the, the thing is, is, like, they didn't increase the base accuracy to where they originally were. So now the weapon is actually more forgiving because... Before any of these changes started to happen, whenever they were almost pinpoint accurate, if you were trying to shoot someone in the head, then there was a good possibility that it would go around their head. It would go over their shoulder. It could go under their arm, you know, depending on how the character is. But now, since there is some slight accuracy loss and there is some slight bloomage to the weapon, if you aim at their head and don't hit their head, it's okay because you're still hitting them in the body. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, I mean, you just made the SMGs easier for people to use and more forgiving across the board. And I'm going to run through these, but this is my thing. Okay. What needs to happen in my opinion to balance the whip, the SMGs out, leave the accuracy where it is, because that's what everybody seems to want, but re- revert the, the fall off thresholds, just revert the fall off thresholds. I mean, and one more point before we go on. While they have dropped a bit in use rate and their win rate still above 50%, the SMGs are getting a global, a global bump. Here's the thing that everyone needs to realize, developers included in this. Whenever you have people that only run what is considered meta weapons and the SMGs get touched, whether they got nerfed or not, they're going to move on to what they think is going to be the next meta weapon it doesn't yeah. matter it doesn't you could have went in there on a on you could upload patch notes and say all the smgs got nerfed by 50 percent. don't put anything else in there than that but don't touch the smgs at all and you'll have people complaining about the smgs yeah. you'll have people moving on to using assault rifles the hydro exactly 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 it is what absolutely happened? <laughs> yes, it is an absolute placebo effect. People see and hear through the grapevine that, oh, and that's the thing, word of mouth. Oh, man, they touch the SMGs and woo. Okay, yeah, they're you dog ran, shit now. Have you used them? Yeah, exactly. You ran one game with a fucking knight and you got bodied by some people that were better than you. And now all the SMGs are dog shit. And then not only that, but you're going to upload videos to Twitter of mm-hmm. you making them look bad on purpose. In a way so that you can get them changed back to the way. That, and it worked. And it fucking worked, guys. It fucking... This propaganda bullshit fucking worked. They caved. That's all there is to it. I hate that. I, I thought that it was going to be different this time around, but I'm glad I was proved wrong. Well, <laughs> we didn't have to cave three weeks in. Exactly. It's like, can we go a little bit yeah. longer? It's just three weeks. Exactly. And then, like, dude, they, we'll, we'll get into the ARs in a second. I'm going to go ahead and run through these. So the SLC, the base accuracy has been increased. The ADS accuracy has been increased. And the damage falloff thresholds were increased from 7.5, 16, 20.5, 
to 9, 18, and 23. The 24S base accuracy was increased, the accuracy loss per shot decreased, the max accuracy loss decreased, and the damage falloff thresholds increased from 8.5, 16, 19.75 to 10.5, 18.5, and 24. The LMPX, the base accuracy has been increased. The accuracy loss per shot has been decreased. The accuracy return delay has been decreased. This is a buff, of course. And the damage falloff thresholds increased from 9, 19, 24 to 12, 22, and 28. The objection, the body damage has been reduced from 13 down to 12. The base accuracy has been increased. Fix the ADS accuracy issue where it appeared as if the weapon accuracy worsened while in ADS. Uh, accuracy loss per shot has been decreased and the fall off thresholds increased from 10, 15, 17.5 to 10, 17, 21.5. The night base accuracy has been increased. The accuracy loss per shot has been decreased. The max accuracy loss has been decreased and the accuracy return delay has been decreased. And the IBEX got an ADS accuracy increase. It's crazy. Like the accuracy return delay, just so everybody is aware of that, it's like, okay, when you shoot the weapon and it blooms out as people, it blooms out as people are saying, whenever you stop firing it, the accuracy return delay is like from the time you stop firing it, X amount of seconds go by until it mm -hmm. returns back to normal, like where it's supposed to be, like whatever the value of it is. So basically what that means is like whenever you stop firing the LMPX, you're going to get back to that base accuracy that you're supposed to be at faster than you mm -hmm. were able to. So now you can really take pop shots with the LMPX and it be, I mean, you don't even have to do that. It's pinpoint accurate regardless, you know, like especially when you upgrade it all the way. They, they need to dial these back. Like the, the only thing that I would keep somewhat consistent is I would drop all these back down to eight, seven and a half, eight and a half, whatever the different variations of these ranges are. I would extend the second threshold. So, for example, the D48 should be eight, 19, tw and then 25. That's how it should be. You should do the most damage at eight meters, but you should do, and like if we look at this chart that I snipped over here, 80%, 55%, 30%. If we go by these rules, it should be like 90% for the from where you're standing to eight meters, it should be 90%. And then it should hit it to 45% of the total damage. And then it should drop it down on that last threshold to about. 20% and be done with it. Like that's how it should be. You should be doing the most of your damage and you should be most accurate in that first where that first uh fall off threshold exists and then extend the second one out, extend the third one out, but m dial that percentage in just a little bit to where it's not doing as much damage at range. I think that you know what you I don't oh, Go ahead, man. Oh, I was just going to say, if you do that and you leave the accuracy where it is, then I, you will still be feeling like you're shooting people for damage at longer ranges, when in reality, it's going to feel a little bit more balanced, and you're going to have the accuracy that you oh so wanted so badly. So, Well, dude, I thought on the second patch, well, they were going to touch the ARs, and then you were going to put them up against each other and see how that plays. Yes. But no. Yes, that's what I thought. That's it didn't it. even get, you know what I mean? Because it was like, once they touched everything on the SMGs, it was like, well, now the ARs are clapping. Of course they are. Yeah. Touch those, then put them head to head. Then we see. Yeah, exactly. But we didn't I don't understand get the why that didn't happen. Dude, I, that, that to me is the thing. Like, either they should have done the AR changes in the last update, or they should have waited to do the AR changes until the next update. Why, yeah. they, why they threw the AR changes, except for the Hydra and the HR, uh, HRM 30K. Those two, they should have put those in there. That's fine. Not shade even. Maybe do that one. Leave the rest of them alone until you see how they're performing. Because like right now, with the way because assault rifles are next, with the way that assault rifles work now, is even in close quarters engagements, you're better off to ADS your weapon, which yes. slows you down, makes you it makes your aiming slower. You have people running around doing fucking backflips and somersaults all over the way all over the place with something that does more damage faster than the weapon that you're holding. 
How is that? What is that? I, I don't know. What is that? That's what I thought was going to happen. It's like the first event pass, you change the SMGs, you change at the halfway point, you do the ARs, and then we got enough data for the next event pass. Exactly. But no. But no. <laughs> no. Wrong. Yeah. yeah, wrong. For the assault rifles, they are globally going to have their accuracy tuned in favor of ADS more than hip fire. This is to fit more of their identity of being larger weapons to give a better space for SMGs to have their strengths in close quarters engagements. Keep in mind the net accuracy base plus ADS is the same. Hip firing was, was nerfed, but ADS was buffed. So they're, they're the same accuracy across the board. They just dialed the numbers in different ways. So that being said, the HRM 30K, they're pulling back some of the adjustments from the prior update. So the movement speed penalty was reduced from 0 0.02 to 0 0.005. And the mag upgrade amount was increased from 25 up to 30, which are good changes to the HRM 30K, in my opinion. The Hydra. Let's talk about the Hydra for a second. So the... The SMGs get changed, right? And then everybody starts running the Hydra because, like, it had some of the best hip fire in the game for an assault rifle, and it does 40 damage, if not more, if you have crack shot, hitting mm. headshots up close. So, of course, something like that is going to run rampant, especially since it's been tweaked over time and nobody's really looked into it. So this is what they did with it. The hip fire accuracy was reduced. The ADS accuracy was increased. The move, There was a movement penalty added at 0 0.01. Accuracy loss per shot was decreased. Max, ac max accuracy loss was increased. Accuracy return rate was decreased. The fire rate was reduced from 5.5 .5 down to 5. And the upgraded mag size was reduced from 40 down to 30. So basically they made it... Easier to control, have better handling when they they drop the fire rate on it down. Yes, it did drop the TTK down just a little bit of the weapon, but it made it a more reliable weapon to shoot at range. They reduced the hip fire of it, uh, but they made it basically pinpoint accurate whenever you're ADSing it. This, they reworked the this this weapon into a, a fully automatic DMR. That's all it is now. And it still burns people down. You're still doing the same amount of damage. Yes, it is firing a little bit slower. Yes, it holds a little bit less bullets. Yes, the hip fire got reduced on it. But it's still, you have to run it differently. And everybody that are like, the Hydra is bullshit now. The Hydra sucks. It's like, no, you can't run in there and hip fire people to death. You actually have to aim with it. Yeah. Like, that's the difference. And when you aim with it, you're pinpoint accurate, so you are going to burn people down. I had a full argument with someone on Reddit about this, about, and they brought in, like, the bishop and how the bishop was better than the hydra now because the bishop has a faster fire mm -hmm. rate. But, uh, yeah, and my whole point that I was trying to make during this argument, and it's on Reddit. You can go read the whole thing. They wanted to bring TTK and stuff into it. I had to show them that this country boy can do a little bit of math. But anyway... At, at the end of the day, you are dropping the TTK down for the Hydra because the Hydra and the Bishop are comparable on the damage and the fire rate and everything else. But the Bishop has like 12 bullets in the magazine and the Hydra at base has what, 20? Also automatic. Yes, it's also fully Big automatic. Difference. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, it did drop the TTK down a little bit, but it is still a very viable weapon. You just can't run and gun with it anymore. You have to play it more like a DMR as opposed I to mean, playing it like a stalker. A, yeah, exactly. You can't Ooh. run it. You can't run it like an SMG, basically. You know. So for the KA30, the hip fire accuracy was reduced, but the ADS accuracy was increased. For the Mark IV, the hip fire accuracy was reduced, but the ADS accuracy was increased. The Riptide, same thing, hip fire accuracy reduced, ADS accuracy increased. In the Sahara, the hip fire accuracy was slightly buffed, but the ADS accuracy was slightly reduced. So they kind of tuned it in a different way, which is fine because the Sahara's had like pretty terrible hip fire for a while. Yeah. So it feels better. And then the Nightshade. So, of course, the, the Nightshade is basically the AR equivalent to the LMPX, and they had almost the same stats across the board there for a very long time. So the ADS accuracy for it was decreased, so it uh, 
it got the SMG treatment there. That the jump penalty, the jump accuracy penalty was reduced from negative 0.09 to negative 0.07. The first damage falloff was buffed from 75 up to 85%, and the damage falloff ranges was adjusted from 13 to 26 meters to 13, 23, and 31. So look at this. The first damage falloff was buffed from 75 to 85%. Let's pull our chart back over here for a second. Okay. <laughs> so if we look at this just based off of the Spitfire, it's got 80 55 and 30. So they're buffing this up to 85% for that false first fall off threshold, which is at 13 meters. Okay. If we look at the SMG changes up here, the closest one that we have to that is the LMPX at 12. So that means that whatever that second fall off range for, for the SMGs are is actually insane i don't think yeah. it's 55 percent. i think it's more of like 65 to 75 percent like at least that's how it feels i could be wrong i have no idea but well, that if is we, if they would give us the notes we would know ex but yeah give us the numbers where's the data fucking mason where are the numbers was so, it so yeah it's kind of bullshit that they lump the ar changes in with all this because like you realistically have to ADS whenever you're in close quarters engagements. Like, yeah, the KA-30 still has decent hip fire, but the hip fire is not good enough to go against someone that's hip firing with an SMG. No. When, when their weapon does just as much, if not more damage than yours, and has like really, really good hip fire and ADS accuracy, and has a faster fire rate than yours, then paper beats rock. That's all that is. You're instead of making weapons like you set out, like you said you were setting out to make everything viable and come down to player preference and player choice, you're turning Rogue Company back into a chess game. What are we doing? I shouldn't be punished because I want to run a different weapon. Yeah. And for the shotguns, the SK. So these two shotguns should round us out on the inter, uh, the initial core pass. These are more focused on balancing around the removal of toughness, as they had initially received damage buffs when that system existed. We'll continue to watch shotguns in general, as they have a really low use rate but a moderate win rate. So the SKL six, the headshot damage was reduced from one ten down to one hundred. The body shot damage was reduced from seventy five down to seventy, and the fire rate was reduced from two to one point eight. Eight two with a striker eight ten, yeah. With striker eight ten, the body shot damage was reduced from fifty two down to forty eight, and the third fall off range was reduced from twenty five meters down to twenty meters. So I'm guessing the shotguns have like fall off ranges of like five, twelve and a half, and then twenty somewhere somewhere in that ballpark is how the 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 damage fall offs for the shotguns work, which makes sense. They're shotguns, you know. And you can fill that with the S12 already when they made those changes to it. But, like, I haven't tried the shotguns yet. I've been too, like, angry and trying to understand how these other weapon changes work to, to run the shotguns. But dropping the fire rate from 2 down to 1.82 is a pretty substantial nerf to the fire rate for the SKL-6. Yeah, it is. That's why you see it like, has 12 more. You, and you have to, like, max, you have to fully upgrade to even get it to increase its fire rate so you have a faster fire rate with it. Right. So, like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It might be unplayable now. I mean, I, I haven't seen a lot of them. We, we like, went against a, a uh, glitch either last night or not before last. With the that striker? Was, that was using the SKL. And the range on it is still there. They didn't touch the range on it. It isn't doing as much damage at range, and they're not able to pop off as much as they once were. But yeah. it's still pretty significant, though, all in all. It's just not <sighs> like... It's not what it once was. You are going to have that downtime associated with actually humping it to try to get that next shell in. And then, of course, the reload with it. So so this rounds out the shotguns. The pistols were still waiting on the Salvo and the P-12 to get hit. Um, the SMGs, I don't know what's going on there. Like, I don't know. Like, to me, the thing that they need to do with that is they need to just 
adjust the fall off thresholds and reduce the range on it. Make the mid range, extend the mid range out more is all I'm saying. Like be bursty up close and almost comparable with shotguns, but a little bit further away. But if you want them to exist in that middle ground, then let them exist in that middle ground. Just drop that damage fall off from like whatever it currently is down to like 45, 40%, something like that. I mean, that, that would, and leave the accuracy where it's at. I mean, I shouldn't be getting beamed across the map anymore with the LMPX, but we're back there. Yup. And the ARs, I mean, if you're going to leave the SMGs where they are and not do anything with the ranges and the fall-off thresholds and things like that, you're going to have to revert all these changes, in my opinion. I mean, give me my hip fire back. Exactly. On the give KA-30, me a, dude. Give me a chance. It was my only chance, yeah. Yeah. I can't ADS fast enough to take out that LMPX up close. Like, Yeah, right. All right, guys, so this is the community section of the unofficial, official, unofficial Rogue Company podcast. If you want to contribute, uh, be sure to hit us up on Twitter at Brocast. You can shoot us an email, broadcast at gmail.com, or you can join the Discord. Link will be in the description down below. There is a Brocast contributions over there on the Discord. If there's anything that you want us to address directly, those are the ways to contact us. But first up here, we have a post by Package Novel. Rogue Company is the best. This was six hours ago, by the way. I say goodbye to this game because the Brazilian servers don't find a match, unbalanced weapons, and lack of basic resources. Two years playing and believing that improvement. But that's not what will happen. And then you've got people who says, this game is hot garbage right now. Never thought it could Mm. get worse, but it did, unfortunately. But the devs work so hard on stuff that doesn't matter and actively make the game worse. Why would anybody want to quit? Don't you want to stick around and watch Jared nerf every single rogue into a sponge? I mean. I am. So that's six <laughs> hours ago. People are like, all right, I'm done. You know, like I'm, I'm through playing it. So. Next up here is a post by uh, Ethereal Images. I think the SMGs are in a good place, my opinion. So let's see what they have to say about this. I've been playing a lot the last few days, and I've noticed that people seemingly overreacted to the SMG changes. I'm still getting shredded. This was two days ago, by the way. I'm still getting shredded, and I'm still shredding. In fact, I think they actually feel like SMGs now instead of many ARs. They still beam from across the map. They're just better balanced. It's almost like they were never meant to be used long range. Who would have thought? There is sometimes an obvious difference in the way they feel compared to how they used to feel, but usually when they haven't upgraded. And even then, a level one SMG is plenty competent. I don't want to. I don't want to be that guy because clearly a, sig- a significant amount of people were salty about this change. But honestly, skill issue. Not even saying that to be a dick, but if you're struggling with the SMGs right now, definitely try to have an open mind and just accept the challenge of getting used to their new gunplay. It'll make you a better player. <laughs> Don't be ashamed to do some practice strikeouts either. And then this guy <laughs> said, they just fixed them yesterday. They feel good now. Uh, skill gap. Yeah, right. So I don't know what Ethereal Images is talking about. If he posted this like way later than he wanted to, if he was talking about, but like right here, they're still beaming across the map, just not as good as they once were. Okay, but they shouldn't be beaming across the map at all. Like their SMGs. That's the skill gap, not as yeah. good as they once were. That's yeah, cool. yeah. Next up, <laughs> yeah. Next up, we also have another uh, post about the update by definitely not my fifth account, so definitely has at least 13 Rogue Company accounts. Honestly, don't think the update is that bad, guys. I know a lot of I know a lot of y'all love to complain, but I seriously think this balance update brings Roco much more back in line with where it was before as opposed to the opposite. The previous two updates felt weird because we were stepping in new territory and I was mostly anxious about what was coming on top of the issues with lag and no registrations. But to be honest, I haven't noticed anything but quality improvements with this patch. The nerfs to certain rogues is kind of weird, but aside from that, I don't find too many issues. 
I haven't played any ranked yet, so I don't have a feel for the current meta just yet, but in my hands at least, most of the SMGs and ARs are still effective. The SMGs are actually a viable option now. Sniping and DMR use feels the same, if not a little better, because of the fix to the connection issues. I uh, may comment on this later if I start experiencing server issues again. I actually sat with the update for a day plus before even commuting. Uh, before even commenting on it but as of now i don't have any issues kind of sucks they made one of my favorite characters less useful though buff vi again get the fuck out of here that's all i'm really <laughs> mad about i never played canon much after mastering him that's not my style won't be playing him again ever until they buff him back to normal but again that's whatever for me i'm just happy they didn't fuck up the weapon balance any more than it was the rest of the changes i can live with with the amount of complaints I've seen this time around, I can understand why the devs tend to tune stuff out a lot. It's overwhelming and a lot of the time completely unnecessary, but so is their means of balancing an identity. So I definitely get the frustration. Can we all here just be sure that we're not just complaining for upvotes because it's popular in this sub now for notable reasons. Genuine complaints are fine, as everyone has them, and rightfully so if you spent money on the game. But let's just try to be realistic here. Not everything done is the end of the game or a reason to come here, complain, quit the game, then get back on it, on it a week or two later. The weapon rebalancing was extremely rough, and I wouldn't blame anyone for having quit on the prior update, but the complaints I'm seeing this time around from people whose opinions I usually vibe with are just kind of silly. I give this update a B-, minus. please don't fuck it up again, ran over, edit, I lied, not over, I also, also fix the perks on the rogues you updated. Okay, now rant over. So... Mm. it's it's funny because like i was going back through all this stuff especially since the update and i didn't see any negativity about like there was maybe one or two people that was like man these smg changes are are crazy but like most people are like they're good I can they're burn, smgs yeah i can burn <laughs> people across the map they're good now like right here this is from yeah, Neon Arrow. So th this from Neon Arrow. Oh, yeah, the update has made the SMGs definitely good in their SMG range of 0 to 20 meters. Who the fuck thinks that the SMG range should be 0 to 20 meters? I mean, Neon legit. Arrow. Yeah, the same person that I argued with about the Hydra. <laughs> I mean, they shouldn't be viable from 0 to 20 meters. Like... They should be viable from 0 to 10 at the most, and then they should still be able to do damage from 10 to 20. They shouldn't be pinpoint accurate laser machines because, like, how many maps do we have where you have sight lines that is yeah, longer no, than 20 small. meters? Exactly. This ain't COD. Exactly. All the covers so close together, like... Exactly. No. That's what I don't think people understand. I tried to explain this in some of the videos that I made. These people don't understand distance whatsoever in a game. Like, there, I can think of off the top of my, you've got Windward that has lanes that are longer than 20 meters long that you can actually. But you, like, you have to get up in there with the cover. Like, exactly. You can't just sit way back. You can, but. Yeah. Wanted. You've got some places on Wanted that are beyond 20 meters. What what other maps? Skyfell? Yeah, Vice. You've got... But Vice... A few lanes. Yeah, there's a few lanes. But I would say from like... A lot of cover. I would say from the plant site on Vice to the DJ booth, it's yeah. probably right at 20 meters. Whoa. Like, should we be able to burn that far away with Not SMGs? With SMG. That's what I'm saying. No. Icarus, it's less than 20 meters across the other side of the map. Like, legit. And there's so many corners. And that's the thing. Whenever you have a map that has zero cover and it's just a gigantic open field, yeah, then that's one thing. But like on Vice, yeah. But on Vice, whenever you're pushing down street side where the cop cars yep. are, it snakes around. That means that it cuts that lane in half, essentially. 
So there's not a 20 meter straight shot there. You may be able to get in that far back corner and snap to the other side of it, but who is going to be in both of those locations? It's just not going to happen. So 20 meters is not the right range to judge these things at, in my opinion. Well, if that's 20, then it needs to be 10. That's what I'm, yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's, Got to be half I'm, that. Yeah. Because I'm using an AR to hit that DJ booth. Yeah, right. And come on. Actually, whenever this is over, if you want to, while we're on here with Tally, we'll jump in there and see how we'll far see. it is. Yeah, exactly. We'll see. All right, so Broken Horror Crux said, can anybody suggest some game similar to Rogue Company where devs don't fuck up every single update? I'm tired of changing my main Rogue. There is no continuity at all. Brought that strength speed thing up. Brought that strength speed thing. Okay, but now again reverted. Tried to play with Cannon. Now they fuck up his Gatlin gun. They are actively trying to make every character weaker, even when nobody cared. Cannon was already easy to kill. Now it's easy... Now easy when using his ability. What the fuck? I'm done now. Want to move to a different game now. I don't like first-person shooters, so would love to play a decent third-person shooter. Thanks. He's not wrong. Like, cannon ability is useless. And people that actually like to play cannon, believe it or not, whether he's popular or not, you know? He just gets burnt now. He's just target practice. Yeah. Uh, so Quero Conf- Confleus here said Helping Hand should have been buffed instead of Lifeline getting nerfed. If you saw the new patch notes, you probably noticed that Lifeline has been nerfed because it apparently overshadowed Helping Hands. In my opinion, Helping Hands should have been buffed instead because nerfing Lifeline won't change the fact that Rare Helping Hands is barely noticeable. What is Rare Helping Hands? Let's see. Uh, perks, helping hands. Dude, while you're looking that up, I mean, you're canon main. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And you were even like, I can't even get the gun out in enough time. Yeah, right. I heard you say it. And you were like, well, fuck this. I'm not even going to run it. Yeah. Man. I can still run cannon and gain the benefits of its kit, but like the ability's useless. It's fucked, dude. As soon as you pull it out, you're burnt down. Yeah. Can't mount, can't lay down. Nothing, not a target. Yeah. So rare is 20% increased speed. Uh, epic is 30% and legendary is 40%. So it makes sense. They made it match it even more so, right? Because now Lifeline scales 20, 30, 40, right? So they're the exact same, literally the exact same perk now, right? Besides the Lifeline immediately starts regenerating your. Whoever yeah. your rebounds health immediately. That's yeah. the only difference. Let's see. Because they have an update. Unless you're playing here. Battle Zone. Oh, it's 1530 and 50. 1530 and 50. Instead of 2040 or 20, whatever the other one was. So, But it's comparable enough to be close enough to be the same perk, you know? I hope Jared saw this guy's post. Yeah, right. This is like we're playing Reddit company now, so. Yeah. So, OB posted four days ago, prioritize projects ain't over anything else. I'll preface by apologizing for a wall of text. I also plan on doing zero proofreading. (laughs) At least they put it up front. Um, As someone who has been around since the start and has seen the game go through changes, I believe we are at the point in which the good is being vastly outweighed by the downright atrocious. I've been gaming for a long while, and I've seen titles I love crumble. SOCOM, H1Z1, and others that are alive but have strayed far from what I enjoyed. At this point, the 30-day Steam charts are down by about 25%. The Twitch viewers are down by about 50%. And I find myself opting to play other games as well. It's unfortunate, but I can't overlook the uh, consistent connection issues, let alone the influx of cheaters. I've had people straight up tell me they are hacking with no fear of repercussions. Hack, ban, new name, repeat. While I can tolerate them to an extent, seeing five in a few hours of gaming is excessive. 
then games that I can actually play, half of those have insurmountable connection and stability issues. The larger issue being it doesn't seem to affect anyone, everyone equally. Uh, there have been games in which I'm fine, but I can tell others are experiencing the connectivity issues. That really creates a lot of competitive balance issues. I believe implementing smaller changes more often than monthly or bi-weekly larger changes can alleviate backlash as well as isolate some of the unknown issues that arise after the fact. Talking out of my ass, but, a, but just a suggestion. While I don't care to get into the SMG blunder, the Hydra LMG meta, crossplay, the matchmaking, long-term bugs and glitches in the game, and so on, at some point it becomes more viable to go back to the season right before the objection meta and build from there. Keep crossplay for player base necessity, but enforce your terms of service with your board members or volunteers to clean those cheaters out much quicker. I, for one, have stated I would volunteer my time to do such. It's not like they are difficult to spot most of the time anyway. But I was instructed that there has been a utilization of an algorithm to measure human capabilities versus individuals cheating. Teach a few people and utilize the community to neighborhood watch it. As for the connection, I don't understand what the issue is, but I'm just hoping the dev team does. I'm just a consumer, so I only know as much. Uh, it seems like y'all need assistance, and you have a community of diehards that are fighting for existence at this point. Meanwhile, the overall sentiment is very negative at the moment. Help us help you, as it's very possible individuals can identify issues and other possible problems. There are some incredibly intelligent and talented individuals in this community. Some recolors and skins that should be put into the game to highlight those individuals. The groups running co uh, competitive tournaments on their own. Slickville damn near knows everything about this game. Work with these people. They are still here. As for gun balance, cosmetics, tweaks, etc., please put those aside. We will deal with the metas and imbalance gunplay at a later date. Project Saint was promising to us, and it has been an absolute failure up to this point. We need prioritization of and transparency because the current path for this game is no different than those titles in the first paragraph. It's hard to play when nothing registers correctly or someone is ruining the game for the rest, especially the racist P POS is running around recently. What makes the game annoying to play versus what makes the game intolerable? Dude, Ghost even commented on it of Slicksville and he was like, I've moved on. I play sometimes, but yeah. I mean, and Slicks, we've got a post by Slicksville. Always agree, may not agree with everything Slicksville has to say, but always good uh, information. Very intelligent and uh, very well read and very well spoken. And I mean, that's a shame. Like it's it's a shame that now these people, dude. There's a huge portion of the creators for Rogue Company that got into the veiled experts or whatever that game is called that's coming out on steam as part of their partnership program so you're fixing to see a huge drop of content from people that were making road company content that's going to start dropping content for yeah. that game like even though it's just on pc right now if there's hope that these that this game that could potentially be better than road company is going to come over to the uh console market then Rogue Company is going to have to Rip. really, yeah, it's going to have to do something to set itself apart. It's like a, a Roco 2.0, dude. Yeah, exactly. It I mean, really is. Yeah. So this is something that we were actually talking about earlier. Attic, this attack, the snack. I don't know. Battle pass takes too long to progress. Okay. So I did a rough estimation. I did a rough estimation in paint to see how much XP is needed for one level in the battle pass. I use paint to measure the length of the XP I received after a match and compared it to the whole line that shows the XP required for the next level. According to my calculations, it is about 3000 XP for one level. One game usually yields around 200 to 250 points. Towards your battle pass progression, if you divide 3,000 by 250, you get 12. And one game takes around 10 minutes, usually even more depending on queue time and failed matches. 
Uh, so it adds up to about 120 minutes for one level. Now, if you don't complete any challenges, it would take 600 wins to reach level 50 battle pass, 420 wins respectively for the level 35 battle pass. Even with challenges, you gain around, and this is a rough and generous estimation because I don't actually have the data for it. So four weeks at two hard challenges is uh, at 2,000 XP is a total of 16,000 XP. Four weeks at two medium challenges is 1,250 XP at 10,000 total. And four weeks, two easy challenges, 800, which is 6,400 total XP. This totals up to uh, 32,400 XP from seasonal challenges. Note, this is probably a lot less. So if you complete all of the seasonal challenges, you would still need about 470 wins for a level 50 battle pass or around 290 for a level 35 battle pass with dailies. If you're lucky, you can earn about 750 XP. If you play 10 games and earn 250 XP in every single one of them, while also completing all the daily challenges, you can earn about 3,250 XP per day. Let's say you complete all the seasonal challenges. You are still left with 117,600 XP needed. It takes 117,600 XP. Uh, divided by 3250 is 36,185 days while playing at least 100 minutes on all of these days to complete the level 50 ba battle pass. I think this calculation was way too generous because sometimes you can only earn 450 XP with daily challenges or less depending on challenges. Also, while trying to complete seasonal or daily challenges, you're expected to receive even less XP for matches. Damn. I mean, that right there tells you exact like <laughs> this is insane. I'm not I a play all night, get a level and a half. Exactly, right? Like, whoa. Yeah. Sweat and two, like Yeah. So this is this is what was <laughs> communicated. They they told us that the XP that you get in a match is directly correlated with time played in a match. So if you play for 10 minutes, we played that match earlier for 10 minutes, and we both received, what, 320 XP? You got you got 312, I got 311. Okay, so... On that one. Yeah, right. So, like, and that's You it. had 10 more downs than me. Yeah, right. So you got one more. <laughs> yeah. So it's directly, okay. it's directly correlated with time played versus like actual achievements that you have done in the match. It's for the new guy. Yes. It's catering to them. That's dog shit. That's dog I should get extra. Give the new guy that for time played. Yeah. What about me? Yeah. I got 24 downs. Yeah. yeah that's pretty Five exciting. hills. Yeah. I capped a point. You what? should... You should be getting at least like 10, 15, 20, 25 XP for each down you get. You should be getting 500 XP, in my opinion, for every person you revive. You know? There you go. Yeah. That'll well, make that happen a lot more. Yeah. Every time you plant or defuse a bomb or contest an objective or whatever, you should get like 250 to 500 XP. Like well, they you wipe a whole team. Just you. you. You should get you should a thousand. get XP for that. Yeah, exactly. You wipe you the entire team alone. Yeah, you should get a thousand. If you get a clutch, like if you plant the bomb, oh yeah, the team gets wiped out. Like no, 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 they plant the bomb. Your team gets wiped out. You drop all four bodies and defuse the bomb and win the round. That should be fifteen hundred XP 1, right off the top. Dude. Like, give me a fucking break here. And I understand they don't want to increase the XP that you receive per match. This is just me speaking, but they don't want to increase the XP received per match because we'll get back into that vicious cycle we were in where it's like, I completed the battle pass in two weeks, man. And it's like, if you're completing the battle it's only pass, three weeks, yeah, exactly. I mean, six. But if you're completing but, the battle pass, a, a level, a 50 level battle pass in two weeks, how much fucking rogue company are you playing? You don't have a job. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. You don't have a lot. That's the difference here. What about us? You're we spend money. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're we playing, buy shit. You're playing 12 hours a day for two weeks to unlock every, like, unlock everything in the battle pass. That, like, 
catering. Well, see, now they're like, the people that spent money, well, now you can spend $30. and Fuck that. Yeah, exactly. Fuck I'm that. I'm still having to grind it. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's fucking crazy, man. Like, it, it I don't just, like it. I don't either. And my thing is, is like, adjust the XP values, give actual XP values to meaningful things in game. And if people complete their battle pass in two weeks out of a six week battle pass cycle, then fuck them. Like, I'm sorry, but fuck them. Still play. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know what else you want me to say about that. Like, it sucks whenever you play your ass off and you go six to six and then it's the last round of the of the the game and you pull off a victory and you sweat yeah. that hard just to get 418 experience yeah. 350 yeah dude give That's me like, a what? break yeah it's insane man all right thrusher or thusher here said priorities please fix this trash all right, Ooh. well, I refrained for long enough. This game, while fun, is trash. From what I've seen here recently, half the population likes the balance fix and removal of speed and toughness. This was seven days ago, by the way. The other half does not, doesn't like it. Not everyone will be happy either with it either way. So please ignore those in this discussion. Either way, we don't really care as long as the game is playable. Fix the bugs before balance and cosmetics. I don't know who was running the show, but the inexperience is clear. Here are the bugs my team experienced in a single game today. Sorry someone went missing. Like half this game's population, if you don't fix the bugs, put in a large ban for people who leave ranked. It will eliminate people doing it. Banning character bug causing my teammates not to be able to choose. Had Mac highlighted, but made uh, made him be secret. This happens to people I play with 90% of the time. I went to throw a grenade on point. Yes, a suicide mission for a potential 3v3 to 1 exchange. My character pulled up the grenade and I just ran around with with hand up with no ability to throw or change to a weapon. Final kill lag. Like what the fuck is that? Get it together. Number 5, <laughs> cheaters. Here's a list of five things. Figure it out. Dev, stop working on stupid battle pass cosmetics and messing around with gun or character balance for the time being and fix the actual game first. He polished the turd, dude. No. You know what I'm saying? No. That happens to Garbo. If he highlights someone and picks them at the same time as somebody else, you bam. No longer. You just have to wait and see what you get. Yeah, I can roll, no roll longer get no row. Yep. I just have to. Uh, that's and a new one. Happened, that's happened like two or yeah. three times. Cause like just the timing of that has just happened. Yeah, coincidentally, and that's yeah. Seen it happen everything. to a few people. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, the the weapons need to be balanced. But yes, I agree. A lot of this stuff just needs to be go ahead. Just go ahead and nip that shit and get rid of it. You know, like let's fix the bugs. Let's fix the inconsistencies. And like some of this stuff has just popped up. Like I've never in the entire time that I've been playing had a grenade in my hand. And then something happened to where I was like cooking it and then it won't let me throw it. And then it's just in my hand and I'm walking around the map with my arm behind my head. Like I'm throwing something can't swap yeah. weapons. Can't do anything else. It's just like, that's the first time this update is the first time before. If you had a grenade in your hand and you were cooking it and you got EMP or glitch hacked, then you couldn't do anything with it. You had to swap to your weapon. Yeah. It worked. It's fine. But now just because the sun is, at a certain position in the sky, <laughs> it causes it. Hold of it. Yeah, it run just, around. Yeah, I don't understand. So, <laughs> next up, this is the ghost of Slicksville uh, post here. This was eight days ago. So, keep this in mind. This was way before this current update that we got. This was actually the last update where they did all the SMG changes for everything and brought the LMP night and the. Um, um, the other one, it was the LMP, the Nye, and the D40 back up a little bit. 
So this is what Ghost of Slicksville had to say. So SMGs currently. So I want to ask, do SMGs feel more powerful and close range than before? I'm not here to debate about liking or disliking the change. Respectfully, I will likely ignore most comments that refer to that discussion. This is primarily, do they feel stronger than before? Do they feel stronger than before? Do you feel more rewarded for using them in close range, or do you just ignore the class now? History. I feel SMGs were good to mid-range before 30 meters. Fucking crazy. So close range power was kind of diluted by the versatility and strength at range. You wasn't forced into close quarter and could safely use range and cover. This isn't as easy as many have said, though. It still required skill skill and time to learn this even though once you got the skill and the time in you could do it but that's beside the point now uh with the three different damages at varying ranges smgs will currently feel stronger in close range than mid long range they seem to require a more aggressive and luck based play style if enemies cover bloom can be unforgiving and be your biggest disadvantage so you kind of have to keep the heat on and make sure they don't get to a comfort to a comfortable and to a defendable location this is semi the purpose of an smg though Question, is this better for you? I don't want to lead the answer, so that that is my question. I feel like many have said I feel like many have said it's a change in play style to some degree. Are SMGs stronger in close range, stronger than they used to be? Or is the is them being weaker at longer range making us think the close range TTK is stronger or faster than before? Subjective. First damage drop off lowers SMG TTK so harshly sometimes. Losing fights due to the enemies backing up a few steps during the bullet exchange is very annoying. Similarly, shooting at enemies in cover can be very punishing due to bloom. My answer, SMGs feel more powerful and close range than before, but they aren't. I feel TTK and bloom is too heavily affected by the first range drop-off, and that first range drop-off needs to be a smaller damage difference in some situations especially when considering map sizes layout and cover generally speaking smgs are okay in my opinion they perform adequately uh, adequately majority of the times but it's easy for that one death or that one game to just say this smg identity changes uh bullshit revert it i know jared said the next update is globally buffing smgs a little bit and i feel that will be the icing on the cake to make them just right if done properly and in correct moderation as i feel we aren't far from them being good and like that's why i feel like they were over buffed 100 percent. because like if you adjust the accuracy of these things but you like yeah it sucks when you're shooting at someone and they're trying to get away from you yeah I mean, that's just the way that it is. Like that's the game. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And if you're a bot. Yeah. And if you're running an SMG and you're picking your fights and you're using cover to your advantage and everything, then you don't have that problem to worry about. But yeah, whenever you're shooting someone and they're right on that line of being in that first fall off range and that second fall off range. That's just a part of the game. That happens to all the weapons, whether it be assault rifles, DMRs, SMGs, LMGs. It doesn't matter. Like, that's just how it is. I felt like the SMGs before this update felt good because once you got into that damage range, you were still burning them down faster than they could react. But you you were fucked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And most of the time you would get fucked trying to move to those positions. But... It encouraged a more creative play style, though. More skill. Exactly. Exactly. And that was the thing where it's like, if I get within that range of SMGs and get burnt down, so be it. It's fine. It is what it is. You know what I mean? So, but yeah. I th- I just thought that this was an interesting post eight days ago. I'm sure Ghost of Slicksville loves these changes yeah. since, you know, the damage fall-offs and everything, but whatever. And we'll never know because we didn't get to see the AR touch alongside. Yeah. Yeah. So Igor posted this Juke quality of life rework up uh, rework idea. So Juke is my second most played rogue. She is very powerful when it comes to weapons and gadgets, but even her movement. But there is one flaw to her movement, and that is being unable to roll. 
Why is that a problem? For example, when you jump on a box to shoot someone, you would usually roll off of it afterwards. Well, with Juke, you can't really do that since it keeps you in the air due to her dash, and that can cause you to die. Now, I was thinking, what if we made it so you activate the Juke boots by having to press dodge roll twice? This would solve the problem and would allow us to both be able to roll uh, and boost when it's needed. I feel like this would be a good change and make it a bit better. Well, back whenever Juke was released, I said that her passive ability was stupid, and Juke booting all around the map was dumb. And I still stick by that. That's why I don't like her, dude. I can't roll when I want to. Yeah. The only reason I don't like her. I wish I could decide. Because, yeah. you know, if, if you boost too many times, you'll roll. Yeah. Is that still a thing? Does that still work? Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah. But that, I mean, they could have made an entire rogue over this boot, juke boot thing, you know, where you could activate it, disactivate it, maybe like move faster for a duration, blah, 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 blah. But they wanted to combine like three different rogues into one rogue. And by doing so, they kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit with it. But I don't know, like triggering it would be fine. Maybe holding it down. Would oh, be another and option. Then you slide. Yeah, exactly. So when you let go, you stop. Yeah. If you're far enough, you don't want to go the whole way. Cool. Yeah, it just takes you a, a short duration. But if you tap it, maybe you just roll. Yeah. But the roll should take up one of the charges, though. Sure. Why? I mean, why not? And then that way, whenever you run out of charges from juke booting and rolling around, you can't do anything else. You're just stuck and walk or crouch or whatever it is, you know? So last up here, give custom games attention by <laughs> Consolo. Custom games should have all game modes, especially King of the Hill. There should also be an option to edit in game rules, such as round timers, etc., to give the community more at their disposal to get creative with their friends. Then Jared responded on it. Definitely want to put King of the Hill back in, addressing a bug with it. In the future, I absolutely do want to add more options to it so players can have their fun customizing their games. Adds a lot of longevity. Yeah, I agree. And I would like those because, like, I enjoy doing the custom matches, you know? Yeah. Um, I wish that there was a way that they could, where you could submit custom matches that were, like, legitimate matches that were played out to get XP off of them. Yeah, because, I mean, come on. Yeah. Sometimes we'd be sweating at some customs. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. I like that for them. Yeah, I mean. XP off that. If you're in there just dicking around or whatever, then maybe, like, of course, don't reward XP for that or don't make it to where people can get in there and um, exploit it. But if we get in there on a 4v4 yeah, demo, go hard. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then let us do what we need to do, you know? So. But that was everything that I had for the community section. Of course, it was a little bit longer, but I mean, we haven't done the community section in like two or three episodes. So wanted to, you know, hammer a couple of things out there. But if you want to contribute in the future, you can hit us up on Twitter at Brocast. You can shoot us an email, Brocast at gmail.com, or you can join the Discord. The link is in the description down below. There is a Brocast contribution section over on the Discord. So feel free to hit that out. But for this episode, I'm here with Dirt Lord. I'm here with Garbo. And I'm here with Griffin. And thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys so much a lot. And thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> and we will catch you guys on the next episode. Have a good one, guys. <laughs>